Hey, I'm Dale Hart Jr., driver of the Diet Mountain Dew National Guard Chevrolet, and you're watching JR Sport Brief. So look, folks, a lot of you all have been asking me, JR is in Alaska. Why are you in Alaska? Well, I'm about to tell you right now. I'm here with my main man, Dallas Seavey. Now, Dallas in Alaska. Um, tell the people who you are. I mean, I, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. All right. I'm the youngest Iditarod champion ever. Just won the Iditarod this past March uh, at 25. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of five people ever to win both the Yukon Quest and the Iditarod, the 2,000-mile dog sled races in Alaska. Oh, wow. Now, uh, I mean, we don't have dog sled racing in uh, New York City. A lot of people just get up in the morning and they go to work. <laughs> so before we get started, a big shout-out to Mountain Dew. They have a new drink called Kickstart right now. It's a fruit drink. It gets your day started. It has less caffeine than coffee. I know you have some. Uh, the Iditarod, just explain how tough it is, especially when it comes to sleep. We were talking about that on the side earlier. The Iditarod is usually about nine days for the winning team, and you're looking at maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour of sleep a day, day after day after day. And this is the most grueling stuff you're ever going to be in. It's 40 below zero. You're running with the dogs. You're pushing up the hills. Nobody can help you. You're responsible for all the care of those dogs. So sleep is a precious commodity and you got to get moving. you got to get moving. you got to get your day started. What does your sleep cycle look like, man? I know it's tough because last year you won. It was like nine, nine days you won in? It was nine days, four hours, 29 minutes, and 26 seconds. But who's counting, right? Oh, the, the, winner, <laughs> the winner is counting. <laughs> so I mean, on that thing, it is one nonstop day. You might catch a nap here or there, but you're not really on a schedule. I might run for six hours at a time. I might run 14 hours at a time. And I'm going to stop for anywhere from two hours to six hours. Mm -hmm. And any time we're stopped we're moving I'm moving the dogs are resting on the trail I'm helping them get down the trail so it's mm. non-stop boom 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 the whole time you've got to be doing something important that's cool now this is something that runs in your family your your, your grandfather was an original organizer uh, your dad raced he still races your brothers race what is this just in the blood yeah something like that and that are in the water who knows man yeah. <laughs> um, my grandfather ran the very first I did rod finished third in that race my dad won the I did a rod uh, both my older brothers have run it my wife's run it uh, my younger brother's getting ready to run it I've done six I did rods now I think mm -hmm. won it last year so yeah this is definitely in the family my daughter's already trying to start mushing well you, you, you know what if your daughter is mushing I think this is something I have to go out and try myself so what I, I I know you gave me a little rundown. It's 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 harnessing. What are some of the other things that we're going to be doing? Yeah, we're going to be getting the dogs ready. It starts with kind of learning how to handle the dog. Okay. You know, putting the harness in, uh, putting the harness on them, getting them in the team, clipping them in there. Right on there, just like that. Bomb. Easy as pie. That was simple. <laughs> Your dog's running away. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not so simple. Kind of where to put the dogs, uh, the commands for steering them, uh, then getting on the sled and doing it. And you're going to have to get some practice on that, and we'll, then we'll let you go on your own team and then give them a snack when we get home. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it all. I, I think I'm going to need my own little kickstart. But you know what, Dallas, I'm going to take your word on it. We're out here in Alaska. What are we, like a couple hours outside of Anchorage? Yeah, we're in Willow, Alaska. This is the mushing capital of the world right here. That's why I live here is this is the best place to train sled dogs to compete in and win the Iditarod. That's why we're here. Let's get to mushing. This is generally a simple process. It doesn't take too long to harness up. It doesn't take me too long. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> that was a point of statement, too. I, 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 think I, I think I know where this is going. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. Now this leg. There we go. All right. So we got a... Uh, now you basically grab onto this back part right here, like the... This? The actual, no, I'd grab onto this. Um, right. And then you can bring them on over to the line. Ring there, yep. yep. Grab the big ring. Now you got it. Yeah. Yeah. I harness the dog. Can I have like a job in the future? We'll see. We'll see. You got to learn how to mush and you got to learn how to pick up the uh, droppings. We'll just call it for now. Okay, so uh, you got to start somewhere. But right now, before we go out, we're actually going to take a look at the sled. Let me let me get out the way a little bit. Cameraman, come on, get in here. Well, what's the word with the sled? Uh, this sled here is more of kind of a, I guess we'd call it a touring slash recreational sled. It's a little bit different than what I'm going to be racing in the Iditarod. But it's a good one to learn on. It's a little stiffer. It gives you something to lean on. My sled, if you lean on it, it'll just fold right over. Now, the biggest thing for steering a dog sled is actually your brake. You use the brake a lot to control the direction now, of the sled. The brake is the brake is uh, the brake would have to be this right here. This is apparatus right this here. This whole thing is the brake. That whole thing. This whole thing is gonna come down, and basically, it's incredibly simple. You got these tines, dig into the snow, and when the sled moves, it cuts a groove basically. Well. I think I'm ready to go. 
cool. How you feeling? I feel good. You're now I a professional good. musher. <laughs> um, I, I feel, uh... <laughs> now it's my turn. in New York City. It's awesome. So Dallas, I think uh, I did a good job. What do you think, man? You're the expert. You're the Iditarod champion. How did I do? You did pretty dang well for being your first time mushing. You crushed it, man. You know what? I think I'm going to have to bring some more people up here to Alaska. It's not something a lot of people in New York, let alone the other 48 states, get a chance to experience. I had a good time, man, from the harnessing uh, to the practice that we did to the actual run. And right now, I know we're going to reward the dogs with something to eat. But before we, we get the dogs some food, where can people find out more information about the Iditarod and then yourself? The best place to follow the Iditarod is at Iditarod.com. Me personally, uh, Dallas CV Facebook page just just the athlete page man we put all sorts of cool updates on their nice. videos get to meet the dogs everything well let me say this this experience has surpassed any expectations that I had go follow the Iditarod and if you ever get a chance in life to do what I just did make sure you do it it's worth it it's beautiful out here big shout outs to Mountain Dew go ahead click that link right there this is JR it's Dallas we're in Alaska now it's time to feed these dogs. Now I want to keep my hand, right? Yep. I want to keep my hand. Hey. It's a warm enough day, someone may want it. Oh. Uh, Guinness wants a snack. We got Patron and Cuervo here. Hey. <laughs> Mexicano. Hey. Hey, hey. Easy there. Easy there. Easy there. We have two sisters named Salt and Lime. Ah, Salt <laughs> They're and Lime. They're the little ones. <laughs> you need a little bit of chasing.